Hello everybody and welcome back to another Flutter tutorial. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about list views. So we're gonna be building the part of our app where when we actually type something in here, so say I type hello and I press enter, rather than just popping up as plain text underneath here and being overridden anytime I uh, type something else here, it's gonna actually pop up in a list and that list will be scrollable so that it can have infinitely many items so that all of the different posts that we're gonna be showing at some point in time, especially if we're loading them from a database or something like that, can appear and can be rendered efficiently. So that's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be talking about list view. Uh, this is gonna get a little bit complicated. Uh, I know I've said that this is a beginner tutorial series, but what I mean by that is beginner in terms of the Flutter framework. As I've been saying, I do uh, recommend or kind of hope that you guys have some programming knowledge so I don't have to explain absolutely everything. But let's just think about what modifications I'm gonna need to make here to actually start setting this up. So essentially what I want is I want there to be a bunch of posts uh, every single time you type a message. And what is a post gonna, con gonna consist of? Well, I want a post to have some kind of body text or main text, and then I want it to have an author and a number of likes. So you can like the post, you can unlike the post, it's by a certain author, and then maybe in the future we'll make it so that if you click into a post, you can comment on it or view a photo or I don't know, something like that. We'll, we'll see what we can add to this. So a post is gonna consist of an author, a body, and the number of likes. Now a post also has to know whether the user has liked it or has not liked it, right? If you think about like an Instagram post or something like that, if you press the like button, it shows that you've liked it. And if you like it again, it unlikes it, right? So that's what we're gonna have to do for this post system. So in order to kind of create some data structure to hold all of our posts and all that information, I'm just gonna make a new class called post. So this is a regular class. This isn't gonna be a widget or anything like that. It's just gonna be your standard vanilla class. And I'm gonna say class post. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up my attributes. So I'm gonna say string, if we can type this here, we're gonna say string and what do we want? We want that to be the body semicolon. And then we will have a string which will be the author like that, and finally we ha will have an int, I guess, that will be the likes. And then we will have a Boolean, which will say if the user has liked this post. Okay, awesome, so we have that. And we're gonna set this to false by default, so just say that's equal to false, and I think there's no capital on that, there we go. And now we'll make a constructor, and I'm just gonna say post, and it is mandatory that when you make a post, you pass it, the body and the author. So we're going to say this, oops, this dot body and this dot author like that. Okay, awesome. So what this is going to do is essentially say, oops, let's not put those inside of curly braces. Then this needs to be just positional arguments. Whenever we make a new post, we must pass it a body and a author. This will automatically assign the author to be equal to whatever we passed in and the body to be equal to whatever we passed in. We're gonna set the likes default zero and we're gonna set the fact that the user has liked this equal to false by default because we know that if we just made this post, it has no likes and the user has not liked it. Then we're going to add a method that is going to be run whenever the user likes this post. So it will add one to the likes of this post or subtract one based on if the user has already clicked it or not. So let's just add a void here. We'll say void, um, you know, like post or something like that. And all we're gonna do inside of here is say, if, oops, actually we're gonna change this. We're gonna say this dot user liked equals not, which is this exclamation point, this dot user liked. So this will simply reverse whatever this is. So if user liked is false, and then we call this, it will become true. If it's true and we call this, it will become false. Now we're gonna say, okay, so if, this dot user liked. So if that is true, if the user did like it, then let's add one to the amount of likes. So let's say this dot likes plus equals one. And we need a semicolon and then otherwise, so if they didn't like it, then we'll say, or if they unliked it, this dot likes minus equals one. So essentially this is just saying, if you press it and it was already pressed, subtract one like, if you press it and it wasn't pressed, add one like. And then that way you can just kind of spam it on and off and it will update one like, go away one like, you know, you get the point. It's gonna go zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. And now we have our post class. So what I need to do now is I need to figure out, okay, where am I gonna draw this list view and how am I gonna keep track of all of these posts? Well, right now what we have is that when we make a new post or we hit the message and we submit some text, it goes to this callback method, which is change text. 
What change text does is simply change the text that's showing up on the screen. Now that's not exactly what I want to happen. In fact, what I want to happen is I actually want to store a list of all of the posts. And I want to take this text that the user wrote inside of that field, and I want to make that into a post and store that somewhere. So what I'm going to need to do here is I'm going to need to actually make a list up here. So we're going to get rid of all this text related stuff. So including this text widget here, first of all, so text, we get rid of this dot text and I'll change the name of this after, but let's make a uh, attribute up here. And we're just going to say, actually, I don't even think this needs to be final. I think I can just say list in angle brackets post, and we'll just call this, um, I guess, posts like that and we'll make that equal to an empty list. So we're just going to start by having a list of posts. Uh, we denoting that saying that this is a list, it's going to store posts because that's what the angle brackets mean. We call that post set it equal to an empty list. And now instead of calling change text, let's actually change this to new post so that it makes more sense. So new post void new post takes some text. And what we're going to do here now is make a new post and add it to the post list. So we'll say post dot add and then inside of here, we're going to say new post like that. And we need a body and an author. So for the body, that's going to be the text. And we don't yet have a notion of an author. So I'm just going to leave this as Tim for right now. So all of our authors will be called Tim. Um, doesn't matter for right now. We'll just leave it like that. But we will probably end up changing this later. Now we need to change this callback method when we're passing that to body. So instead of or not body, sorry, to text input widget, instead of this dot change text, I'm going to call this this dot new post, right? So now we will actually be modifying this list and adding the text to this list whenever a new post is created. So that's the basics. And that's how we kind of get that set up here. And now we need to actually make a list view they will be able to display all of these posts. And we're going to have to obviously put that inside of the body. So we're going to make a new widget that will be our post list. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to make a stateful widget. So we're going to say, uh, I guess, STF. And there you go, STFL. And that's going to be stateful widget. We're just going to call this post list like that. It's pretty basic. And now let's just start rendering this list just so we can see how this works. So let's go inside of body. We can see we have a column and now I let me just make sure that this is the right render. I don't want to mess it up for us. So let's see how I'm actually deciding to render this. Uh, yep. So we'll leave that as column. And then after text input widget, we're going to put our post list. So we'll say post list like that and just make a empty set of brackets. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put an expanded widget um, that contains all of this. So we'll say expanded like that and we'll say child colon I'll explain what that does after I just add the second one here and we'll say expanded child colon and we need to scroll over. Okay, let's go and add another bracket. Oops. Add another bracket like that. Okay, so now we can actually see this what the expanded does is essentially just make sure that everything that we have as the child actually fills an entire area. So right now the post list, we're not rendering anything. It doesn't have a set size. So we want to make sure that this fills as large of a space as possible. And same thing with this text input widget. So this text input widget does have some kind of size, but by wrapping both of these in expanded, this means we're going to take up the entire screen. So we should have the text input widget first and then the post after. But I actually would rather have the list up top and the text input widget at the bottom. So I'm just going to reverse the order of these and put this at the top. So we'll get rid of the comma there. And now we have that. So now we should have our post list and the text input widget. So let's do a hot reload here and let's just have a look and see what we're getting. OK, so there we go. So we have the list, right, uh, or whatever is up here. And then we have the text input widget. Now, obviously, things aren't looking perfect right now. This isn't at the very bottom of the screen. We'll get there in a second once we, once we change what's actually being rendered inside of the text input widget or sorry, the post list widget, not text input widget. But again, the expanded just takes whatever child is here and just expands its size so it fills as large as it can. So if you ever uh, run into problems where you're seeing like stuff that just isn't taking up the entire screen or you have something that's saying, oh, yeah, this item doesn't have a size, you can just wrap it in expanded and that will automatically hopefully fix that for you. So you can actually read here, it says creates a widget that expands a child of a row column or flex. So the child fills the available space along the flex widgets main axis. That's the more formal definition of what that does. Okay, 
So now we're gonna go inside of post list state. We have post list up here. We're gonna start making some modifications. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do here is we're going to need to actually create a list inside of here that's going to store all of the list items. So just like we're gonna have all of the items that we're gonna be displaying, where is it? Inside of my homepage state, so inside of this list post, we need to store them inside of post list as well uh, because we need to know what items we're actually gonna be displaying. So inside of here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say final list like that, and we're gonna say post, and then we're going to say list, oops, like that, list items will be our name. So we have final post list items. Now we're gonna add our constructor. So we'll say post list and inside of here, we'll simply say this dot, oops, list items. So the idea is that this post list will simply take a bunch of posts and it will display them for us. So that means that we need to pass our uh, post list here, a list of posts to display. So what we can do is we can simply give it the current posts that are here. So we'll just say this dot post. And now whenever we have the text input widget and it adds a new post, it will modify this post here by setting the state. So we're saying this dot set state post dot add. So we're adding a new post, which is saying, Hey, we're changing the state of this widget. And then that will automatically update this post list widget right here. And we'll send it the new post list that it can display. So that's the idea behind this. Uh, and we'll see how all this is going to work, but uh, that that's the basics essentially. Okay. So we have all that. We have the list items here. We have post list items. I don't think I need to do anything more in there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually start rendering the widget. Now I might be looking to the left hand side of my screen here because I have the code up. It's actually fairly complicated to make this list view. Uh, so I don't want to mess this up. So I will be referencing that as we go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to actually render a list view. So we're going to say list view, and then we're actually going to say dot builder. So the list view widget itself actually has four different ways that you can use it. Now I'm not familiar with a bunch of the other ways. They're all really specific. You can go to the flutter website and look them up, but this list view dot builder essentially allows us to define a way to construct items. So we pick um, how many items are in the list and then we say, okay, this is the function that we want to call whenever a new item is added to this list. And what that function will do is actually generate what one item in the list will look like. So you're going to see how that works as we start going through it, but we're just defining a function inside of this list view dot builder that will build each individual list item. The reason for this in terms of a flutter backend is that we don't want to render every single widget all the time. We only want to render widgets that are visible. So if we simply have a function that can just take some list item and render it, then we don't need to display every single list item at once. We can just call that function on the items that are visible and display those specific ones. At least I think that's the logic behind this, um, but we'll go through and we'll see how this works. So the first thing we need to do is we need to say item count is equal to, and we're going to say this dot widget because we're going to reference this stateful widget up top. And we're going to say dot I believe it's list items dot length. So this is just defining how long this or this list view is, how many items are inside of it. Well, how many items are going to be inside of it? The amount of items we have inside of our list items um, list, right? So that's what that is going to be in there. And then we say item builder. And what we do here is we define a function that will tell us how we build each individual item. So what we're going to do is we're going to say context and then index like that. And then we'll put two squiggly brackets like that. And this denotes a function. So essentially what this is saying is that we have a context, we have some index, and then inside of here, we can use this index to display specific items. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say var post is equal to, and in this case, this dot widget dot list items, and we're going to index the index. So the way this will work is essentially we're telling the list view that, hey, you're going to have, you know, eight items, you're going to have five items or how many items are inside of this uh, list items widget or not widget, this list items variable that we defined up here. That's how many items we know we're going to have. So we're kind of defining like, OK, we're going to have five, four, whatever it is. Now list view knows, OK, you're going to have four items. 
So this index is going to have to rotate from zero to three. It's going to go zero, one, two, three. So iterate from zero to three because it needs to render all of those items. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab each item that I want to render from wherever it is that I want to render it. So in this case, I want to grab the post that has the index of whatever index is being put into this function here to build the item. So I hope that's making sense, but you have the number of items in the list 